So we know that thermal chemistry is the study of the conversion between chemical reactions, chemistry, and energy. Well, you know us. We're going to want to do calculations with this. And so we need to know the units that are associated with energy. So let's have a little lesson about that and how to convert between those concentrate, I mean those, um, sorry, those energy units. So here are some energy units down there in that table, and we'll worry about those in just a minute. But let's start with the SI unit. The international system unit for energy is the joule. We will use the joule when we're talking about, um, you know, how much heat is given off by a reaction or absorbed by a reaction. We will use a joule when we're talking about how much work is performed by a gas expanding or contracting when we get into those chapters on gases. But it's SI unit is the joule, but it's not the most common unit that we will hear about. It's the most common one we'll use in chemistry, but you've heard about other energy units as we've gone into, uh, you know, in your world in the back of a candy bar. So let's talk about that. When you eat a candy bar or any food, it'll have a calorie content on it. So that calorie count is um, an energy unit. Now when you look at a calorie that you consume, it is a capital C calorie, not a little c calorie. All right? A capital C calorie we see in the middle of that table there. You see it there? A capital C calorie is really what we would call a kilocalorie, okay? sometimes called a kcal. And a little c calorie and a joule are related by this equality. So that is a, uh, the most common one that you're going to be using right there. What is a capital, K, a capital C calorie? It is equal to 1,000 little c calories because it's a kilocalorie. Okay, so that is the conversions there, and the calorie and joule conversion is one that I believe we're going to be asking you to commit to memory. Now here is the next thing that's really important for us, and that is um, how a joule breaks down into its base units. It is a derived unit. A joule is a newton times meters. And a newton is a force, which is mass times acceleration. Now if we take the SI units for each of those, okay, a newton would be mass, which is kilogram, okay. Acceleration is meters per second squared. Those are all the bases of a uh, newton. And then times mass, would, or times meters, meters, I think I said mass over and over again. Let's make sure we said it correctly. Mass is kilogram, acceleration is meters per second squared, that's the Newton part. And then times a meter would be the Newton times distance, okay? And so now all of that, and that would be force acting on a distance. All of that is tying it together. So all of that put together gives you this. Now I, <laughs> believe it or not, have all those other little pieces of red in my mind. I have in my mind that work is um, force times distance and work is a, um, uh, sorry, that this is in newtons and this is in meters. I take all of those pieces together and I have to do that in order to always remember this. I can kind of run through it kind of quickly and if you've got it in your brain because of a physics class that's great but if not you're just going to have to flat out memorize uh, this relationship. A joule breaks down into kilogram meter squared per second squared. Why do you have to memorize that? Because there's very often times where you need to cancel the kilograms with something else and then take a square root so that you've got meters per second and the speed. And without that, you're not going to realize what kind of units you're needing to cancel. And so you have to memorize that. Now whether or not you do it right now, or put it in your mind and um, that you need to and then once it comes along in a problem you're like, oh yeah, I was supposed to know that. Um, that's up to you. So here is a calories definition. It is the amount of energy, very specific de de 
specifically defined the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree. Now this is not very much energy. Let's imagine a gram of water. I want you to imagine a cubic centimeter. One centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. Not very big, okay? That would be a gram of water. One centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter would be one cubic centimeter. That is a gram of water. It's not very much. And if we wanted to raise it by one degree, we could put a little flame under there, okay? A little Bunsen burner and heat it from 25 degrees Celsius to 26 degrees Celsius. It doesn't take very long to do that whatsoever. All right, so a calorie is a small quantity of, of energy. And then the calorie and the, the joule are related by this. A joule is even smaller because it takes four of them to equal one calorie. Now the other common unit of energy or that we use in energy is, oops, we've all done all that, is the watt. The watt is how much energy is used in a second. So, you know, you got a 60 watt bulb. How it uses 60 joules of energy per second. So that's what, that's what a watt is. So we've got that information and what we want to do is be able to do a calculation to convert between energies. So I thought it'd be fun to take our, and I love Snickers candy bars. So let us figure out how many kilojoules of energy are in every gram of a Snickers bar, all right? So this is what I know. If you take a Snickers bar and you look at the calorie count on the back of that Snickers bar, it says it's 250 calories. And I know that the candy bar is 44 grams because that's also written on the candy bar. So I want to know per each gram what we have there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to take that 215 and that's a capital C calorie because a nutritional calorie, whether they put a capital C or not on the candy bar, every time you're in a nutritional label they are giving you the capital C calorie. That capital C calorie is the same thing as a kilocalorie. They are one in the same. Okay, so I could think of it that way. And then I'm going to go from the cal kilocalories to just calories. Now why am I doing that? I want to get to joules and the relationship I know to joules comes from this little c calorie. So I put a one with the prefix, I put 10 to the third with the calorie, and now I'm ready to go from calories to joules. And it says on that table there's 4.184 joules in a calorie. So what's canceling? Capital C calorie is canceling. Kilocalorie is canceling. Little c calorie is canceling. But I want to know it in kilojoules, so I'm going to take it one step further. I don't want joules. I want kilojoules. Put a one with the prefix and put what it means with the base. Now all of that will finally get me to kilojoules. Notice I had a kilo here. Um, we have a 10 to the third in the numerator and a 10 to the third in the denominator. I don't need to put that in my calculator. That's cool. All right. So I'm going to take 215 times 4.184 and I'm going to get 899. I'm pulling along an extra sig fig here for now and that's this many kilojoules and that would be in the entire candy bar because that was the calorie count in the entire candy bar. But I want to know it per gram. So I want to know it per gram. This is how many calories are in 44 grams. So when I divide that it will be per gram and that will give me a value of 225 okay, kilojoules per gram. Now let's assume the candy bar was exactly 44, well not, not exactly, but 44.0 grams. I think the candy bar just said 44, so we really can only know this is two sig figs, but let's do that. Assume that my candy bar is 44.0 grams, and now we have converted between our calorie, our units of energy, and use it in the calculation.